welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. I am delighted to have the privilege one more time to come into your home. Thank you, Pastor Jade, for leading us in worship this morning. I do pray that all is well with you right where you are this morning. To our church family, we say a very special good morning and welcome to you and others that are joining us uh, from many different places today. We say welcome to you as well. We're believing and trusting in just a very short time. We will be able to join back together in this sanctuary. And we will worship together as we have in days gone by. And, uh, there's nobody, I don't believe, that wants that to happen sooner uh, than I do. And so I look forward to uh, our reunion uh, in just a very short while. And we'll be continue to give you updates on that. And we're working hard trying to make preparations for that and uh, we'll be meeting again this week with our leadership team here and uh, we are uh, taking uh, all the information that we've been given and we are doing our best to formulate a, a plan to bring us back as quick as we can so we can worship together in the house of the Lord and I'm so thankful for your patience so thankful for your support during this time but uh, today uh, we are very appreciative of the technology that we have, that we're able to come into your home this morning and share the word of the Lord with you. And that's what we want to do over the next few moments. If you have your Bibles with you today, I want you to just jump in the word with me this morning. I'm going to take you to Proverbs chapter number 3, but also we're going to transition over into the book of Acts chapter number 27. Uh, for a few moments this morning, I want to share with you uh, that which the Lord has birthed in my spirit for today. And if the Lord would help me for a few moments today, I'd like to minister on this thought, living with confidence even in the storm. Living with confidence even in the storm. We today find ourselves in this nation as well as many other nations around the globe, we find ourselves in a storm. And sometimes storms tries to bring fear upon us and uncertainty comes and Many have saw the devastation of the storms uh, that has taken place in the natural throughout generations, and it's brought great destruction. And today we find ourselves in a storm, and I want to kind of address that today. But I want you to understand with me this morning that we do not have to stand in a place of fear this morning. So I want to take us to the word of the Lord today. And in Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse number 25 and 26, give these two passages of Scripture to you as we began our time together this morning. We find these words. It says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. I'd like to read that again so that gets into our spirit this morning. It says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Solomon, as he wrote these words inspired by the Lord, it is something that we can take great comfort in as well as we can look at it and examine and realize that God is our source. He is our strength. He is our keeper, even in times of storm. If you was to go to the first part of chapter 3 of the book of Proverbs, beginning in verse number 5 and verse number 6, many of you probably can quote that passage. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. But if you jump down to verse number 11 of this passage, it says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he brings correction to, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that gaineth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and of the grain thereof of fine gold. 
She, meaning wisdom, is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Now, you and I today, in this season of life we find ourselves in, we need to be men and women that hold to wisdom and understanding. You may ask, why is that this morning? For no other reason than the passage that we just read together, we find that when we lay hold to wisdom, there is peace, there is life, there is pleasantness, and there is peace of mind, which takes me to where we began this morning in 25 and 26 of this chapter. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. This morning, we find ourselves in a time and a season where there is much uncertainty. But we know this, that when Solomon was writing, yes, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, but also Solomon, who was the son of David, uh, experienced and heard conversations and probably even read some writings of his father. And we know that in Psalms 118, verses 8 through 10, the psalmist David wrote these words. He says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. David understood something. He understood that as long as I put my confidence and my trust in God, then I am victorious. Can I tell you when an individual or a community or a church family or a nation for that matter will put their confidence in the Lord, uh, then there is a assurance that victory will belong to them. We know today that the definition, the basic definition of confidence is simply full trust. I want to ask the question this morning, what are you truly trusting in? What are you really putting uh, all of your energy towards? What, what are you really putting uh, your, your faith in this morning? Uh, we find that if you was to go to Proverbs 25 and 19, it says that confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Uh, this is not a time and a season, my my friend, for you and I to put our confidence in men, uh, especially unfaithful men. What am I talking about today is this. Uh, there is a lot of people that's telling you, trust me, uh, I have the answer, uh, or I have the resource. Can I tell you today that we are in a place right now where, yes, we are in a storm, uh, but I am serving the one that is still able to walk on the storm, uh, and he is able able to bring confidence uh, and peace to all that will call on his name. We know today uh, that we have to make a decision every day of our lives uh, on who we will serve. Uh, But I am reminded in Proverbs 23 and 23, uh, it says, buy the truth uh, and sell it not. Uh, Even in the midst of uncertainty, uh, we have to stand strong uh, and we have to hold on to the truth of God's word. Uh, Truth is simply this. It is the true or actual state uh, of a matter. Truth is not established uh, by circumstances, uh, nor can it be changed by them. But the Word of God uh, is forever established, uh, and there is nothing that is catching him off guard today. Uh, But you and I today, men and women of faith, uh, we have a promise. uh, And that promise is this. uh, I will never leave you, never forsake you, but I will go with you always, even 
to the end. Uh, That means uh, that his declaration uh, says that I haven't left you yet, nor will I leave you now. Uh, Not only are we in a place where there has to be some decisions made uh, in this nation uh, and in the worldly system uh, that we're all affected by, uh, but there's some decisions that's got to be made in the church world as well. Uh, And the madness of this hour must cease uh, if we are going to experience a time of renewal. Uh, So this morning, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, Whose report uh, are you going to believe? Uh, Are you going to be one that lives with confidence uh, in the Word of God uh, that has weathered the storms of time? Uh, Are you going to put your confidence uh, in men uh, who are unfaithful uh, to the things of God? Uh, We find this morning... uh, that we can look all throughout Scripture and find uh, stories and illustrations uh, that shows us the faithfulness of God. Uh, But one that I want to share with you today, you find in the book of Acts, chapter number 27. Uh, I will not read this whole passage to you today, but I do encourage you uh, to read it. Uh, It is concerning a man by the name of Paul, uh, and we know that Paul was a a man that, uh, that did some amazing things things for the Lord after his conversion uh, on the road to Damascus. Uh, He's the one that has given us two-thirds of the New Testament writings of our Bible. Uh, But we find that in this time and season of Paul's life, uh, there begins to be uh, a storm began to approach. uh, And we find that he is uh, on his way uh, to, uh, to a place uh, where he's going to have to stand uh, before the most powerful men of that day. Uh, but we find uh, in verse number 1 of chapter number 27, it says, And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a satirian of Augustus band. Uh, we know that he was boarded on a ship. Uh, everything seemed to be kind kind of calm and okay, Uh, but we find after they sailed uh, slowly for several days, uh, we come to verse number 7, and through verse number 10 rather, uh, and they're getting ready, they board another ship, and they're getting ready to set sail, Uh, but Paul says this, uh, he says, sir, uh, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, uh, not only the lading of the ship, uh, but also with our lives. Uh, He was saying there is a storm that is brewing and there is destruction and there is there is even a possibility of death uh, if we continue on the path that we are on. Uh, But no one wanted to pay any mind to Paul. Nobody wanted to listen uh, to his words of instruction. Uh, They said, oh, he's just a prisoner. We're not going to listen to him. Uh, He has no status uh, He has no authority, uh, so they set sail. Uh, And as you read through this story, you will find that the winds began to blow uh, and the violent uh, uh, storm begins to come upon the scene. Uh, Eurocladon is what it is called uh, in verse number 14. And it says uh, in the following, And when the ship was caught uh, and could not bear up into the wind, uh, we let her drive. uh, And running under a certain island, Island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, uh, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands uh, and strike sail. And so we were driven, uh, and we had been exceedingly tossed with the tempest. Uh, and the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Uh, and when neither saw Sun nor stars in many days appeared, uh, and no small tempest lay on us. Notice this uh, all hope that we should be saved uh, was then taken away. Uh, Paul and the prisoners and the crew of that ship, uh, they was in a state of hopelessness. Uh, Men's hearts was failing. Uh, They was overwhelmed by their current situation. Uh, 
But if the story stopped there, uh, it would not be a very good story. Uh, but when you go a little further in verse number 21 through 25, uh, it says, But after a long absence, uh, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, uh, you should have listened to me, uh, and you should not have loosed from where we was, uh, but, uh, and you would have not have had this harm and this loss. Uh, but he said, now uh, I exhort you uh, to be of good cheer, uh, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, uh, but of the ship. Uh, for there stood by me this night uh, the angel of God, uh, whose I am uh, and whom I serve, uh, saying, Fear not, uh, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Uh, we find now in this story of Paul, uh, in the midst of a storm where everything has been shaken, uh, everything been destroyed around them, everything been tossed overboard, Lord, uh, all of a sudden there's a visitation from the angel of the Lord uh, and he says this, do not fear uh, because there is a destiny for you uh, that has not yet been fulfilled. Uh, can I tell you this morning uh, as I've been studying and been in the word of the Lord, uh, I know there's some uncertainty. Uh, I know there's some anxiety. Uh, I know there's some people that's anxious. Uh, I know there's, uh, there's just an overwhelmingness uh, about many things in our nation today uh, but I'm here to tell you this morning uh, it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand in confidence uh, even in the midst of the storm uh, I'm not taking light your situation today uh, but I'm also going to tell you this uh, that the God that we serve uh, he's bigger than this current storm uh, he's bigger than any situation that the enemy may try to bring us uh, but somebody's got to believe the report of the Lord uh, Paul said, uh, I see the storm. Uh, I feel the rain hitting me like it's hitting you. Uh, but he said, there is a visitation that happened uh, and you don't need to be fearful, uh, but you need to be full of good cheer today uh, because the Lord has told me uh, that we are coming out of this victorious this morning, can I tell you, uh, there is a lot of people saying, uh, I don't know where it goes from here. Uh, I'll tell you where we go from here. Uh, we continue to put our confidence in the one uh, that has redeemed us, uh, the one that has protected us, uh, the one that has healed us and delivered us uh, in times past. Uh, because can I tell you, he is a God that does not change. Uh, he delivered us in days past, uh, and he will deliver us again. Uh, our nation today, yes, is in a storm, uh, but inside the storm, uh, there is men and women of faith, uh, and I believe that fresh visitation is coming to them, uh, and God is speaking, uh, and I believe if we'll get to the place where we get beyond the noise of the day, uh, we'll hear God simply say, uh, fear not, uh, be of good cheer. Uh, why? Uh, he says, be not afraid uh, of sudden fear. Notice, uh, this virus virus came suddenly on us. Uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of things that can be debated about it, uh, but suddenly upon the people, uh, we began to hear the new cycle change. Uh, everybody began to be captivated by it. Uh, our world was turned upside down by it, uh, but do not be afraid of sudden fear, uh, neither uh, of the desolation of the wicked. Uh, listen, I, I want to insert this this morning. Uh, the, and as I shared last weekend, uh, the unsuccessful attack of 2020, uh, I want you to hear this preacher today. Uh, we are in a time of a disruption. Uh, we are in a time of where God is doing things uh, that we don't really understand in the natural. Uh, but can I tell you this morning, uh, he says, be not afraid of southern fear, uh, neither of the desolation of the wicked uh, when it comes. Uh, I want you to hear me this morning. Uh, God has a plan. Uh, 
He is not in the reacting mode, uh, but he is the one that is orchestrating. Uh, and while we don't understand what's really going on, uh, I think in my spirit uh, there is something I can say with confidence today, uh, that there is a desolation of the wicked uh, that is taking place. Uh, there is an exposing. Uh, there is a ruining that's going on. Uh, can I tell you, there is a day of sorrow uh, and there is a day of grief uh, that is coming coming uh, to the wicked in this nation. Uh, but in the midst of that, uh, there is about to be a reemerging uh, of the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, for the Lord shall be thy confidence, uh, and he will keep your foot from being taken. Uh, the enemy would love to tell you uh, that you're not going to make it. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, when you put your confidence in the one true God, uh, we can stand and know this, uh, that my foot will not not slip uh, and I will not be taken. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, we can talk about revivals of yesterday and how wonderful they was. Uh, but I stand here this morning knowing this, uh, that there are still some wonderful days in front of me. Uh, I'm not slipping backwards, uh, but I'm about to take new territory. Uh, why? Uh, it's because I'm living uh, with confidence. Uh, I know that my God is still able. Uh, I know that he still exists and abundantly more than I could ever ask or think. Uh, I know that he's still the one uh, that is the rose of Sharon. Uh, I know that he's still the one that is the bright and morning star. Uh, I know that he's still the one that is able to walk up on the storms of life. Uh, I know he's still the one that can simply say peace be still uh, and there has to be a calm. Uh, this morning while you're in your home uh, and you, maybe you wish you was in this house and yes I wish you was here too uh, but can I tell you uh, put your confidence in the one uh, that you've served all these years. Uh, he has not forgotten you. Uh, he's not forsaken you, uh, but he is speaking a word to the church right now. Uh, it may look like you've lost some things, uh, but he says rise up and begin to pursue uh, because you're about to recover some things that you've lost. Uh, in this moment, uh, we find just like Paul was, uh, we got to make a decision. Uh, am I going to believe what my eyes are telling me, that it's over uh, or am I going to believe in the visitation of God uh, that says don't you worry uh, there's a place that I'm taking you to uh, and there's a place that you're about to stand uh, can I tell you the church of Jesus Christ uh, is about to stand in a place uh, that many thought it would never stand uh, but there is about to be a precedence given uh, to the remnant of God's people uh, their voice is about to be heard uh, you say why is that uh, no Notice with me uh, in Hebrews chapter 3 verse number 14. Uh, we are made partakers of Christ uh, if we hold the beginning of our con uh, confidence uh, steadfast unto the end. Uh, do not be weary in well-doing this morning, uh, but stand and know uh, that there is a liberty that you have with Christ uh, that this world cannot take away. Uh, can I tell you, uh, we are in a place where we must stand sure-footed uh, in knowing that God is still God. Uh, can I tell you, he's still saving, uh, he's still healing, uh, and yes, he's still delivering. Uh, and therefore, we must practice uh, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, 35 through 39. Uh, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, uh, which hath great recompense uh, and reward. Uh, can I tell you, let me stop there for a moment. Uh, we are about to receive a reward uh, if we stand confident uh, in this current storm. Uh, God's about to reward his church uh, with fresh anointing, uh, fresh fire, uh, fresh vision. Uh, I know I'm preaching to an empty building this morning, uh, but I pray that this anointing comes through that lens today day uh, I feel the revival fire beginning to burn this morning uh, for we have need of patience yes uh, that after you have done the will of God uh, you might receive the promise uh, can I tell you there's a promise uh, coming down that old dusty road uh, and it's still Jesus uh, the one that saves uh, the one that delivers uh, the one that sets free uh, can I tell you in this season uh, there's some prodigals uh, that's beginning to think about what's at the Father's house. Uh, can I tell you, there's someone uh, that has their bellies empty today uh, that's about to partake of some things.
things uh, that would be humiliating, but God said, uh, dust yourself off, uh, get ready and start coming back. Uh, Listen, uh, there's some promises uh, for yet a little while. Hear me this morning. uh, And he that shall come uh, will come, uh, and he will not tarry. Uh, Now the just shall live by faith, uh, but if any man draw back, uh, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Uh, But we are not of them that draw back uh, under perdition, uh, but of them that believe in the saving of the soul. Uh, Don't you think about quitting in the midst of this storm? Uh, Don't you think about, oh, go, saying, I just can't make it. Uh, But in the midst, don't you dare think about drawing back. Uh, But stand sure uh, and say, you know what? In the midst of my uncertainty, uh, I'm going to put my trust in God. Uh, I don't have all the answers, uh, but I know the one that is the answer. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get beyond this, uh, but God is my source and my strength. Uh, Listen, my friend, uh, right where you're at in your living room or wherever you may be, uh, if you'll put your confidence in God today, uh, listen, uh, fear will subside, uh, anxiety will dispel, uh, and there will be a peace and a rest that comes to you this morning. Uh, You and I today uh, got to realize that the promises of God, uh, they are forever settled, uh, and they are forever sealed uh, with the ones that will believe and trust in him. Uh, This morning I feel the preacher uh, and I want you to hear me today. Uh, You say, why is he screaming? Why is he excited? Uh, It's because uh, I have put my full trust in him. Uh, He has never let me down. Uh, He has never abandoned me. Uh, He has never forsaken me. Uh, But in the darkest of times uh, he has been there. Uh, In the uncertainty uh, he has been there. Uh, What am I saying this morning? Uh, I'm serving a God that is faithful. Uh, I'm serving a God that is for sure. Uh, I'm serving a God that said uh, I still love, uh, I still deliver, uh, and I'm still setting free. Uh, You right there in your house, you ought to just give God some praise this morning uh, because you're still here. Uh, If the enemy had his way, you'd done been destroyed. Uh, But this morning, uh, you can stand with confidence and say, uh, give behind me Satan because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This morning in the midst of your storm, don't settle for what the world tells you, but go back to the word of God and you will find that you can be one that walks with confidence and with victory this morning. The picture that we find with the story of Paul is a picture that many can relate to today in their lives. See, if you really read all the way through chapter 27, you will find that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the ship being run aground, it becomes stuck, and the winds begin to beat it. Eurachlodon began to shake it and beat it and tear it apart. And they were stuck. Some of you are stuck today. You're stuck on things of yesterday. Stuck on tradition. Stuck on past relationships. Stuck on failures. Stuck on theology. Stuck on political correctness. You're stuck on church activities. And, and you're distracted. And God's saying, listen, you don't need to be stuck. You need to trust in me because... We find that it was just in a short time there began to be a freedom that was brought, a release from this situation. And I believe in the midst of this storm that we currently find ourselves in, yes, it's powerful. Yes, it's deadly. Yes, it's cost lives. But there is one that is the giver of life that is bringing deliverance to all those that will put their trust and confidence in him. This morning, just like Paul, we have one who desires to save us. You see, there was those in that day would simply say, kill all the prisoners, kill everybody. But the centurion simply said, no, let's save their lives. It was one that desired to, them to experience 
something greater than what they was currently in. But then the angel of the Lord come and said, Paul, don't fear what you see. Don't fear the situation you find yourself in because there's a mandate on your life. And there's a place that you have not yet stood that God is ordained for you to stand. Can I tell you today, there's some things and places and some responsibilities that this nation has to fulfill prophetically as well as the church has to step and fulfill prophetically that we have not yet stood yet. And therefore, this storm is not going to be the end of us, but it is the redefining of us where we can stand with greater confidence and greater anointing than we ever have. If you would fast forward through the story of Paul, you would find that when they find themselves after floating ashore and getting up on an island, we find that he is snake bitten, but he shook it off in the fire. Those that was on that island and never really had an encounter with God, they said, oh, this guy is evil. This, But then when they saw him shake off that viper and it brought no harm to him. They said, oh, he, he must be a god. They was really stretched in their thinking, trying to process what was happening. But because of a man that put his confidence in God, we find that even those that was on that island that was sick and diseased, Paul was taken to. And we find that men and women was delivered and set free because of a man who was willing to put his confidence in God. Can I tell you today, if the church will be the church, and if we'll begin to live with confidence in the midst of the storm, there are those that have never yet experienced Christ that's getting ready to have an encounter with him because of your testimony in the midst of the uncertainty. So this Sunday morning... I don't have a big message today. I just simply have a message to telling you that you and I have the ability to live with confidence because we have a God that is faithful. That's why when I take you back to Proverbs 3, it says, Be not afraid of sudden fear. Do not be afraid this morning. I feel like somebody needs to hear that today. I understand the job situation and the economic situation and the uncertainty of all of those things. But do not be afraid of the sudden fear. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. You and I can have a sound mind today if we will simply put our confidence in Him, even in the midst of the storm. This is soon going to pass. Is there going to be some things we have to navigate through as a nation? Absolutely. But as men and women of faith, please hear me. Our best days are still ahead. He is coming back for a bride that is adorned in beauty. Can I tell you today? The church of Jesus Christ is getting ready to become more beautiful than it's ever been. How and why is that? It's because there's a greater anointing. There is a coming forth of a latter rain that is going to be greater than that of the former. There is some things that we need to look forward to with great excitement and great hope this morning because there is a, there is a fresh outpouring of Holy Spirit that's coming to the church of Jesus Christ the only thing that will keep you from it is if you fail to put your confidence in him so this morning in our time together if you hear nothing else that I say today please hear this be not afraid of sudden fear neither of the desolation of the wicked for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. God is desiring to sustain you. And he has some wonderful things in front of you. So today, 
I want to leave you with this passage of Scripture in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. There's some things that I'm asking him. There's some things that I'm desiring. And those things that I'm asking and desiring, I know that they're in alliance with his will. And therefore, I have confidence that he's hearing, and I also have confidence that he's going to respond. So today, I stand here just declaring that the greatest days of this ministry and many other ministries across this globe is just, just beyond. And we're getting ready to step into the dawning of a brand new season. So I encourage you this morning. Yes, the storms are blowing. And yes, maybe some of you are even feeling the bite of a snake this morning. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do by faith. Just shake it off. Just shake it off and put your trust in Jesus. And he will be found faithful. Let's pray together this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you today. I thank you for the few moments that I've had the privilege to come into the homes of these men and women. Lord, I thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit that I have felt as I've stood in this sanctuary today. Lord, the wind of refreshing, I, I don't take that lightly, but Lord, I, I thank you for that today. And Lord, I pray that right now, wherever they may be that's watching, I pray today that you would just bring a peace and a rest to their spirit. I know the uncertainty of storms can bring anxiousness and sometimes even fear. But Lord, I speak to that today and I command that to be removed and broken off of your people in the name that's above every name, Jesus Christ our Lord. And Lord, I just speak a blessing over them today. And I just speak the word of life over them. And right where they are this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would come and undergird them and just surround them. And Lord, let there be a wind of refreshing come into their home right now, wherever they may be. And Lord, I give you praise and glory for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Go with them today, I pray. Lead and guide and direct in all that they do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you today. We love you. We appreciate you so, so much. Me and Sister Debbie, we are, we're longing to see you. We're longing to be back in the house of the Lord with you. And uh, our hearts are, are towards you today. So know this, that we are working diligently with our leadership team here. And we are, we're going to be coming back together. Uh, in the very near future. So uh, continue to follow us on social media. We will be giving you some updates and things. Uh, I promise in the next few days we'll be meeting this week again uh, with our leadership as we put policies in place to make everybody feel safe when they do come back, uh, hopefully in just a few weeks, uh, into this sanctuary. So God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you soon.